Good evening, everybody. We are now in the last stretch before the new year. We are now in the last day of 5780. Everything goes by the way it concludes. And we are getting ready for a fresh, brand new year, 5781. 5,781 years since the creation of the world. Rosh Hashanah commemorates the creation of the world. It was on the sixth day of creation, man was created, and he proclaimed the greatness of God. And we do that every single year on Rosh Hashanah. We relive that same um, proclamation and um, realization that we have nothing else but God as the master of our lives, the master of the universe. So Rosh Hashanah is on the sixth day of creation, and this year it's 5,781 years since the creation of the world and the creation of Adam and Eve. This week I'm going to combine the regular two videos that we have lately been doing. We've been doing one video on a chapter of my book, A Spiritual Soul Book, and another video on a weekly inspiration from the Torah portion that is read in the synagogue on that Shabbat. So tonight, today, on this last day of the year, which is very solemn and very serious, the great sages tell us that on this last day, we must see to it to seize the very special opportunity of God being in the field to clean out anything that may be have stench in it and dirt in order that we enter the day of judgment and Rosh Hashanah with a clean and a prepared presentation. So it's an appropriate time to be listening to this video and to be inspired um, on this last day. Let me begin by telling you a story from the Kozhnitz Magid, Rabbi Yisrael of Kozhnitz, a Hasidic teacher, a Hasidic master. He was he lived at the end of the 1700s, the beginning of the 1800s. He was a student of um, the Mizritch Magid, the uh, preacher of Mizritch, and Reb Eli Melech of Lijansk. It was at the time of the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Shner Zaman, the founder of the Chabad movement. And this Magad of Kozhnitz, Rabbi Yisrael, a Jew once came to him for some advice to do teshuva, to do repentance. And that's going to be very much our subject that we will be discussing in this video. So this Jew came over to the Kozhnitz Rebbe and he says, Rebbe, help me. I need to clean my soul. I need to do repentance. I've created and made a lot of blemishes, nicks, and uh, I severed a big part or a little part of my soul and its connection with God. Help me, help me connect, help me clean up what is necessary for my soul. And the question that Samagi told him that he should start putting in an extra emphasis in his prayer, do it with extra concentration. He should set times to study the Torah, and he should just in general give more attention to the performance of his mitzvahs. And the man wondered, and he says to the Kajan he says, Rebbe, but what's going to be for the repair of my soul? What's going to be with all the blemishes, all the nicks, and all the bad things? that I have done to myself and my connection with my source, with God. And the Rebbe answered and he says, when a soldier is injured in the middle of a war, the first thing he needs to be concentrating on is to save his life from all the bullets and all the arrows and whatever else it is. And once he is in a better place and he is away from the bad atmosphere that is exposing himself to danger, he can start considering how to deal with any 
blemishes and with any wounds that he has suffered because of the war. The same thing also said the Rebbe to this Jew when it comes to Babal Teshuvah, when it comes to improving ourselves and it comes to performing the mitzvah, it's a mitzvah in the Torah to do Teshuvah. The first thing is we need to run away from anything that is bad. We need to stop thinking and we need to stop being engrossed in anything that is damaging and we need to start turning our attention to the life of a real Jew, which is the life of Torah and the life of its mitzvahs. And it's only once you are back into the right environment, the proper environment that is healthy and that is blessed for your soul, that you could start thinking perhaps of maybe some of the wounds that may be still left over from the past times. And this is the time that we are now entering. Dirishu Hashem Behimatsai, seek God when he can be found. Kura'uhu Behiyose Koroiv, call him when he is close. And these are the ten days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. God is close and he can be found. And who doesn't, especially in these days, want to reestablish a deep connection with the source, with uh, everything that is good and everything that is bright. These are the days, ladies and gentlemen, for us to put more attention and get, get in and stop all the foolishness that is going on in the world. Stop putting any time and any energy into any of the foolishness that is going on in the world. There is a, a, an interpretation from the Geri Rebbe, Rebbe of Rome of Ger. And last week we read in the Torah portion, Nitzavim V'yelech, Penyomus B'milchama, that when a person, I think it was last week or the week before, I can't remember, but just recently we read a, um, a portion of the Torah that when soldiers go out to war and they just got married or they just built a new house or they just got a new field, so then they are exempt from going to war because the Torah says they may get they may get harmed, they may die, and it would be a shame that somebody else should dedicate their house, their new house, or dedicate their uh, their orchard or their field. And this says the uh, the, the Gera Rebbe is a matter of of a, of a great question. Is the problem with the soldier dying? more a problem with somebody else dedicating his house and dedicating his field, or the fact that he died. It seems like the Torah is more concerned that somebody else will dedicate his house and dedicate his field than the fact that he may go out to war and die. And the Geru Rebbe answered and he says, when a person just built his house, when a person just bought a field, or just um, is, 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 is in his first new experience with an orchard, He's very excited about it. He has all his attention, all his mind into it. And when he goes out to war, his mind and his attention is probably going to still be connected and attached to the excitement. And he can't wait to to finish and get back to, to live in his new house and to be able to reap the fruits of his orchard and his field. And if he gets shot out on the field, he's probably not even going to be thinking. His mind is going to not be there to do teshuva, to repent, and to realize that these are his last moments for him to make an eternal and everlasting impression on his soul and in his lifetime, because he's going to be thinking about his house and he's going to be thinking about his orchard. And there's nothing worse, says the Geri Rebbe, that a person should pass away and did not give even a thought to do teshuva, to return and to be sorry and to wish and yearn for connection with God. So the importance of doing teshuva, as the Rambam says, Maimonides, is every single day. And this teshuva is going to be the topic of today's um, video. Finally, let's get to it. And it's going to be chapter 158 of my book, A 
Spiritual Soul Book, Chapter 158, and I'm going to read for you a little bit, and maybe next week we will conclude this Chapter 158, because it happens to be one of the longer chapters in my book. We are now in the season of Teshuva, which is generally translated as repentance. And this is a talk that the Rebbe gave, Rabbi Schneerson, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, when he first became Rebbe. And it became a very fundamental uh, concept that the Rebbe brought to our attention, very, very important. A lot of people translate the word Teshuvah as repentance. This is, says the Rebbe, however, not an exact translation of the Hebrew word. If you want to be more precise in translating the word teshuva, it means to return. Of course, in, 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 in its context, it's talking about returning back to God and it's turning about, talking about somebody who distanced himself from God because he didn't listen to what God was saying. So it's not incorrect to translate the word teshuva as repentance, but to be more exact in the uh, accurate in the translation of the word, the word teshuva means to return. And there's a very big difference between repentance and using the translation return. Because repentance, by the mere definition of the word, indicates somebody who sinned against God. So it would only apply the mitzvah of teshuva, the act of teshuva, which we say we are now entering into this period of time that God is giving us to fulfill the mitzvah of teshuva, which is a tremendous gift that God gives us to have an impact on the past, to be able to clean the past, to go back and to be able to not only clean the past, but actually to turn it around and transform it even into some kind of a positive merit for us, which we'll talk about a little later on. So when we translate the word teshuva as repentance, it would indicate only for somebody who sinned. While when we translate and understand the word teshuva as return, that means that it is applicable to everybody because everyone can perform this powerful commandment to return to a more pristine, original state of spirituality, godliness, and purity of soul. We say every single morning when we wake up, be God, the soul that you gave me to Hoyrohid is pure. Ata Barosa, Ata Yatsarta, Ata Nafachtabi. And we talk about the different levels that the soul descends, becomes more coarse, until finally God puts it into our body. And then it has to go and deal with the constant struggle that the body puts up for spirituality and by nature. Most people, except five people that died with no sin. But as the Rambam tells us, everybody has some kind of shortcoming and deficiency. And that harms and, 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 and makes a problem with the cleanliness and the pristine state that the soul originally came down with when it first came into our body when we are a fetus and then when we are born and then when the different stages where more and more of this soul is expressed in our body the soul when it is first placed in our bodies as it descended from god is by its very nature it is pure light it is pure bliss bliss is even a higher and more esoteric definition to describe this soul because light is still something physical. It's photons, electromagnetic fields. It has a certain spectrum that we can only appreciate, but bliss is an experience which is even greater than pure light. And the soul is complete. It's bursting life energy. Over time, what happens is that because of the environment because of a lot of influences, dust accumulates over this spark of light, and darkness, confusion, lethargy, questions. Questions, by its very nature, is something which is negative. 
on its own if you don't come up with an answer. The question is a certain, it's a certain manner of destruction. It's a certain sense of putting over some wool over a person's eyes. And weakness, as a result of all the above, settles in to the manner and to the character and to the nature of our lives and of our identity. We are searching, and God makes it easy for us, during these, this season of the high holidays to rediscover this light and this inner childlike joy, the faith, the optimism, which knows no worries. That's the way our soul really is when we are born and when we are children. Look how short the the, the memory of a child is. He doesn't stay angry forever and keep a grudge. And he has a lot of optimism. He keeps on trying. Gets up, falls, gets back up again. He has a lot of faith and trust in his parents, in his source of, 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 of nurture and of life. But then we grow a little bit older and the optimism shrinks and the faith becomes a little weaker and the joy isn't as expressive and the light becomes a little bit dark. You know, all that stuff. But this is the season where we can, we can rediscover and we can return back to that state. For that, our sages tell us, our focus must not be on the darkness because as the expression goes, he who lies with dogs will get up with fleas. If you are in the environment and if you are filling your mind always with the darkness, then that's your reality. As we pointed out the last couple of weeks, and we only started on the subject of thought and thinking, and that's really the world that a person lives in. If we think of all that is wrong, we remain attached and connected to only that. To rediscover the light within, I continue on in part, chapter 158 of my book, A Spiritual Soul Book. You got to get that book. Get it on Amazon. You can get it hardcover. You can get it on Kindle. I'm getting such incredible feedback from so many people. They're saying that the book is stuffed with good information. So let's get on over here with chapter 158. To rediscover the light within, we must make every effort to completely erase all conduct that is not godlike from our minds. Because all that is godlike is life. It's living. It's bright. It's blessed. The essence of everything is God. The surface is as you move away. Darkness is when it's concealed. So we are always looking, not everybody, but those that realize this truth and really want to enrich their lives and enhance their lives. They're making every single effort to completely erase any contact that is not godlike from our minds, our lives, and our atmospheres. It doesn't work that I'll just take a peek, or I'll just give it a moment thought, or I'll just take a little taste, or I'll just give it a little try. All of that is introducing the darkness, the sickness, the bacteria that is the antithesis to godlike. So the first step, if we are trying to, and it's not easy, especially when you got into the habit and you became a drug addict, it's not easy. But being a drug addict isn't the answer to making something good out of your existence. People get stuck into prison and then they don't want to go out because they got used to the routine. People get used to drugs and then they don't want to leave it. But some people are smart and they realize much better out of prison. It's much better away from drugs. Of course, it's a greater challenge. You got to take responsibility. 
But the payoff is much greater as far as being able to make the best out of my own existence. Every effort must be made that our minds and lives should be surrounded and immersed in the desired goal. What is the desired goal in order to return as best as we can back to a godlike existence? The underlying emotion is love and fear of God. When we develop a love for God and a fear, a respect, and an awe for God, and that takes working on it. When we say the Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, we are thinking and meditating on the oneness of God in everything and all around us. And that will develop and generate a respect for God, a love for God, a fear for God. But when you have that love for God, then you want to do as much. It gives you the extra strength to do more that is godly. When you have respect for God and fear of God, then you have the extra motivation to drive you away from those things that are going to be hurtful to the relationship that you could experience with God. So love and fear of God and the awareness that everything is good and everything will be good because everything is God. This is the act of returning back to a better place that this period of time is making it easiest for us to reach than any other time in the whole year. As our sages tell us, that during the entire year when a person prays with a minyan, God never despises, never detests, never refuses the prayers of a minyan when there are 10 people, there's a quorum of people. Our sages tell us during this period of time, the 10 days of repentance, every Jew, his prayer is like the prayer of a minyan. And then when you pray with the minyan, you get even like, it's like an exponential buildup of good and of strength in connecting with God. The great spiritual and godly Rabbi Zusha of Anapoli, and here we're getting to the meat of this chapter. It's an understanding and a commentary that this great tzaddik, Rabbi Zushiv Anapoli, he was also a student of the Mizrich Magid, of the preacher of Mizrich. This was a period of time which was very holy and very heavenly. And actually the Alter Rebbe, the author of the Holy Tanya, which a great portion of my book is based on, he looked for the endorsement of Rabbi Zushiv Anapoli when he wrote his book, The Tanya. That's how great the Alter Rebbe considered Rabbi Zushiv. And this is not the time now to tell you more uh, stories about Rabbi Zushiv and his brother, Rabbi Eli Melech of Lizhansk. But on, on another occasion, or you can look it up and Google it yourself, uh, tremendous inspiring stories of the two brothers, Rabbi Zushiv, and Rabbi Elimelech, and then there is also in tremendous stories that how they were born, how the father and the mother, they really had a tremendous self-sacrifice in order to be blessed with these tremendous great luminaries, the um, two brothers, Rabbi Zusha and Rabbi Elimelech. So this great and spiritual godly tzaddik, Rabbi Zusha of Anapoli, he asserted that he could not attain the lofty heights of such a return back to God that we just spoke about all in one time. So said, it's not that easy to all of a sudden, from where you're at, to jump into mentally and emotionally this godly awareness and this love for God and the doing of the mitzvahs and whatever else it is. Therefore, Rabbi Joshua Anapoli said, he broke down this journey into more manageable steps. And he did that by taking the word Teshuvah, which means return, 
and it's applicable to everybody, even those that are not sinners. Just the mere fact that you are human and you live in a physical body and in a physical world and in this type of an environment, it is necessary for you to fulfill teshuva and return back to a more pristine state. And then when you return back to that more pristine, cleaner and godly spiritual state, you will be so much more stronger than when you started out because now you have the extra wisdom of all the experience you went through and the extra strength that you mustered and developed in order to go through the hardships and then pull yourself out of it and become the better person that you are right now. But that's not so easy to just jump into that from where a person may be. So Rav Zushimanapali says, I'm going to break it down into more manageable steps. He took the word Teshuvah, Tof, Shein, Vav, Beis, He, five letters, and for each letter of the five letters in the word Teshuvah, he, he said it represented another step in returning and into discovering a cleaner and a more refined and a more peaceful existence. Because all of that is what you will naturally experience when you reach the Teshuvah. The world is a fragmented world. The world is full of lies and people stabbing each other in the back and shooting each other and all these What's going on these days is is terrible. But you can still, as the Torah tells us in regards to the Jewish people when they were in Egypt, there was darkness all around. But but for the Jewish people, it's possible that people can be dark all around you, but in your head, in your life, you have light. It is possible there can be a plague all around you, but in your life, you have life. Real life, happy life. So it's possible no matter what's going on all around us. Rabbi Zushiv Anapola told us, if you follow these five different steps, you will be able to fulfill and you will be able to reach and you'll be able to experience and accomplish real teshuva. And what are those five different steps? The tough of teshuva stands for tamim. Tamim tihiyeh im Hashem alekecha. That's a verse from the Torah which says, Be sincere, be wholehearted with the eternal your God. Work on that for a while. That's step number one. Step number two, Teshuva is a Shein. And the Shein, said Rab Zusha, stands for, I have set God before me always. Shivisi Hashem lenegdi tamid. Work on always remembering and having the awareness of God before you all the time. Because there's no place void of Him. And that's step number two. Step number three is the third letter in the word Teshuva. And that is the Vav. Teshu. Va, the Vav. And that stands for the Ahafta Lareyecha Kamaycha. Love your fellow as yourself. Find a way to see the positive and a reason to be at least to empathize and to be sensitive to another Jew. And that's step number three. Number four, the chol derechecha da'ehu. In all your ways, you should always know and remember God. Nothing that a person does should ever be separate from his life mission, which is to serve God. And when a person works on himself to have that awareness and that intention and that consciousness in everything that he does, that's step number four in reaching the complete state of teshuva. Step number five, teshuva, the last letter is a he, Walk discreetly in modesty with your God. This is a five-step program 
that Rabbi Zushim Anapoli told us. The great tzaddik. A tzaddik is a refined, godly human being. He knows godliness. And we are lucky to have them. As the Torah tells us, there's not a lot of them. And therefore God planted a little of them, few of them in every generation, so that they can be there to share with us and enlighten us the way to godliness, the way to holiness, the way to spirituality. And Rav Zushiv was one such person. And he tells us, these are the five steps that will help you fulfill the mitzvah of teshuva and get you to a place that teshuva can accomplish. God willing, next week, which will be in the middle of the 10 days of repentance, maybe Mashiach will come before then. We will go through these five steps. So hold on tight. Tomorrow night is Rosh Hashanah. We're going to come to the day with awe and with reverence, but with joy and happiness. It's more a time of reverence and more a time of awe. But also, we are happy that we are standing before a merciful God. A God who is of Harachman, who is a merciful Father. And we have that balance between the two. Shana Tova Mutuka, a sweet year to everybody. If it's sweet, it already include everything that's good. Health and income and joy and happiness from the children and from the family. So a happy, sweet new year. Shana Tova Umtuka to everybody. And God willing, next week, we're going to go through the five steps that Rabbi Zushev Anapoli told us and helped us be able to approach this mitzvah in a step-by-step fashion. Okay.